Hello and welcome to our ninth uh, episode of the Roofless uh, Dog and Pony Show. <laughs> My name is Julio and I am the Dream Alchemist at Roofless Painters. And I'm going to be um, hosting this presentation. It's uh, only me. <laughs> um, so the Roofless Dog and Pony Show is a live and edited presentation uh, featuring the conceptual and stylistic inspiration behind our painting webinars. Uh, we introduce the theme of the next painting collection and talk about the inspiration behind it. And we do so uh, by mentioning um, uh, contemporary art notes, uh, art history references, and we add a bit of commentary. So um, yeah, you can watch this um, now, <laughs> it's live. Or you can just watch it uh, on a post. And also we add the uh, presentation in our um, YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, so we'll present a few slides and then we'll talk about the inspiration behind uh, this Friday's uh, painting webinar. And here we go. Um, so uh, the painting webinar this Friday, uh, we called it uh, Tournesols, <laughs> which is um, um, sunflowers in French, uh, tournesols. Um, yeah, so last week uh, we were talking about um, the postman and we ended up talking about Van Gogh and we discovered a lot of things um, about uh, Van Gogh's intimate uh, uh, life in the south of France, the years that he moved there from Paris and he lived there I think a couple of years. Uh, he befriended the postman um, in the small town for many reasons. Uh, uh, the most important is that he wanted to make portraits and he didn't have enough money to have models. Uh, he was also alone and isolated. Um, and also his correspondence with his brother Theo, who lived in France at the time, in Paris at the time, was very important. So because of all those intimate facts, um, we kind of like went deeper into the story and um, we realized that during that time um, in Arles is when he painted um, the sunflowers, the famous sunflowers. So we were driving by the city and we saw a lot of uh, gardens uh, that have now sunflowers blooming and we realized that August is sunflower season so we put everything together and uh, we decided to get inspired by the current flower of the season, sunflowers, and the intimate story uh, behind uh, the paintings that Van Gogh did. And um, so just to uh, give a, a quick recap, um, Van Gogh moved out of uh, Netherlands, his n native land or um, country, because he thought he wasn't going to have any commercial success. His brother was an art dealer and uh, he was an art dealer, right? I think so. <laughs> he lived in Paris. So he made the move to Paris, but um, when he was in Paris, uh, he actually didn't have a very good time. Uh, so we all know that Van Gogh suffered from um, a few m mental health uh, issues. So the city was not what he expected and um, he decided to flee Paris and move to Arles. But when he was in Paris, he chose sunflowers as a subject matter because um, it was a way for him to calm his mind. Um, so he did five sunflower paintings and we've never, I've personally never seen those paintings. We know of Van Gogh's uh, sunflowers um, and the typical ones. I think he did a total of 13 or 12. And what I'm gonna show, what we're gonna show right now are the sunflowers that he painted in Paris first. Uh, this is one of them. And um, I've never seen this painting before. And there is a, a very specific or, or a, a great distinction between the sunflowers uh, in Paris and the ones in Oral. And there is a reason behind it. So the ones in Paris, five of them, uh, they're out of a vase, they're um, cut. Uh, but you can see the cut and they are in different stages of um, wiltness, if that word exists, um, and they're tossed um, on a surface. 
So there's this one, which is the most um, sophisticated and interesting. There's this study also. This is another study he did while he was in Paris. Uh, this is another painting um, from the series of sunflowers done in Paris. Uh, I've been to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam and I did not see any of this. Uh, I think there is somewhere else. Um, so this is our first time discovering this um, wonderful close-up studies or paintings of sun sunflowers that he did when he was in Paris. So um, he moved to Arles and then he had this vision of creating um, an artist community. And um, so what he decided to do was to invite um, his beloved friend, um, Paul Gauguin, uh, to join him in Oral and uh, with the intention of uh, uh, having a community of artists there since he felt so isolated. Um, so Gauguin dismissed his request over and over until one day he just decided to come down um, and visit uh, his friend uh, Vincent. So by this time, uh, Van Gogh already had uh, sort of like, um, <laughs> not a passion, but he loved his sunflowers from Paris so much that he thought this was something that he could, uh, it could be part of his signature, uh, sunflowers. So uh, when he received the letter from um, Paul that he was going to stay with him in Oral, he was so excited um, that he decided to make a series of paintings of sunflowers to decorate the yellow house he just rented um, in order to welcome uh, Paul Gauguin properly. He bought furniture from his brother, from his brother Theo, which he painted. Um, this is a time when he actually painted his room, uh, you know, the famous painting of the room uh, where uh, there's a bed and there's a chair and uh, there are some paintings on the wall. That's the famous yellow house in Arles. And so he started painting and creating paintings of sunflowers specifically to decorate the house where he was gonna host his friend. Um, so this is the room that he decorated in the yellow house, the famous yellow house. And uh, he had a plan. He wanted to make sure that um, uh, Paul Gauguin f just felt really at home. <laughs> so he did uh, his very best to uh, create artwork for him. So um, things didn't turn out great. I think um, after a couple of months uh, living together, uh, the Yellow House had two rooms and they both kind of, kind of had separate quarters. Um, uh, their friendship just kind of like went down in flames. Um, Van Gogh had one of his episodes, which I don't know exactly what that meant, but um, uh, Gauguin returned to Paris and um, they still uh, continue being friends. And proof of that is that Gauguin from Paris uh, asked Van Gogh if he could keep one of the paintings that he did for him. Um, so Van Gogh didn't want to uh, give up any of the work because by that time um, he uh, stated in one of the letters he sent to Theo that uh, literally he said, um, the sunflowers are mine. He owned that subject and he embraced it and he uh, wanted to be recognized for it. So um, instead of sending him a painting of the sunflowers that he did for Gauguin, he made a copy uh, of one of the paintings um, and his plan was to send the copy to uh, Paul Gauguin in exchange of a Gauguin painting. Um, in the end, he did the copy and now it's one of the most famous sunflower paintings that he did uh, in Arles. Not just the one that he created to decorate, but his repetitions, they're called, he called them repetitions. And those are the ones in the, one of those is in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. Um, so. It's a sweet story, yes, and um, uh, I just love the, the story of the friendship. And uh, then we know that, and I'm sorry, I'm just gonna take a few more minutes, but this is really interesting, and maybe just like two or three more minutes. Uh, Paul Gauguin, as we know, moved to Tahiti. He left everything, and um, then uh, in a few years later, he loved the paintings of Van Gogh so much that um, he wrote something that I'm going to read to you, but he also made uh, five, three or four or five uh, paintings, Gauguin, 
inspired by uh, Van Gogh. And I'm going to show you the Gauguin paintings that he did in Tahiti. Gauguin had a, a garden in Tahiti and he grew sunflowers in Tahiti uh, from seeds that he brought from Europe um, just because he had this fondness and his great memory of uh, what Van Gogh did for him. Uh, this is one of the paintings and you can see the Tahiti, Tahitian, <laughs> I think it's called like Tahitian lady um, on the corner. Uh, this is another exuberant and sensuous um, uh, Gauguin uh, painting a few years later of the episode and yet another one uh, that he did. So the inspiration for our webinar will be sunflowers and I know that this has been done a million times but I feel uh, this story for me it just inspired me to uh, uh, think of sunflowers differently. Uh, I'm not gonna mention how many painters throughout uh, uh, history um, used sunflowers as subjects. This is Gustav Klimt, an extraordinary um, painting of a sunflower. Another Klimt painting. <laughs> That's absolutely, I say these words again uh, and again, incredible. Uh, but another painting of a garden with sunflowers. This is Lois, Lois, how are you? I know you're watching. Lois Dodd, Dodd, Lois Dodd, a British contemporary painter who still works today and does a lot of um, uh, live uh, paintings of her garden. She has this one of her sunflowers in her garden. This is a Matisse um, painting of a sunflower. Uh, this is uh, a painting by Paula Motherson Becker, which um, uh, we talked about her um, uh, a few times. So she does have like paintings of sunflowers. Um, this is a Monet painting of sunflowers. Uh, this is a Georgia O'Keeffe painting of a sunflower. Um, and I think I forgot who painted this but <laughs> I don't have my notes but um, yeah it was someone uh, also famous and what I'm gonna show you is a couple of funny things uh, if I can find them when uh, Paul Gauguin was in oral Paul Gauguin did a painting of Van Gogh painting sunflowers and this is an extraordinary really awkward weird painting that I love because compositionally it doesn't make sense it's just the, the subjects are very separated almost cropped you cannot see Van Gogh's painting you only see the flowers and it's a it's a strange um, it's a strange composition but yes this is a Paul Gauguin painting that he did in honor of his friend Vincent um, I don't know if you uh, also, um, Andy Warhol has a bunch of photos of him uh, with flowers and a lot of them uh, are sunflowers and I have also a photograph of Yayoi Kusama in the middle of a sunflower field and if I can find it I'll show you. This is Yayoi Kusama um, in a sunflower field. This is uh, Andrew Wyatt. Uh, painting of sunflowers in front in front of his uh, farm another um, the 20th century painting uh, inspired by sunflowers so um, it was nice and fun and um, uh, good to see uh, other artists using this as a subject for their paintings and finally Ai Weiwei um, uh, Chinese contemporary artist who uh, didn't paint. He, he's not a painter. He didn't paint some flowers, but he has a famous installation of um, thousands of porcelain made uh, sunflower seeds, uh, which I think conceptually uh, it may not be uh, sunflower as a subject, but uh, there is something about the concept of of the sunflower seed that I feel it connects with what we're gonna do uh, tomorrow Friday. So 
a little bit longer than I expected, but uh, please join us tomorrow. Um, you can find sunflowers everywhere. If you don't want to go to a market, you can just drive around. You'll see front yards in certain uh, neighborhoods in um, LA where sunflowers are tall and blooming and absolutely stunning. You can stop, take a picture, go on a bike ride and uh, make it a mission to spot sunflowers. You'll be delighted, take your camera with you, uh, grab some pictures. Uh, if you decide to go to a grocery store, um, you know, they're they're inexpensive and they're beautiful right now. Uh, we tried to find a sunflower field and uh, we found one one in Oxnard. So maybe 2021, that would be a good retreat <laughs> or excursion. But uh, yeah, it could be a photograph or it could be from live. Uh, hopefully uh, you have had enough um, uh, inspiration with the different styles and um, different arrangements and compositions. Doesn't have to be in a vase, doesn't have to be up close. It could be a, a, a close up uh, with context, without context, um, it doesn't matter. Um, that will be the subject. And in regards of how we're gonna tie this up with our um, series from uh, quarantine, well, I just uh, find this connection with the fact that he used such a humble subject when he was in Paris to um, cut the cord from uh, that existential angst of uh, being in a city he didn't like and then finding refuge in a subject that allowed him to explore color and value and strokes and uh, texture. So we're going to take a respite respite i think that's the word <laughs> and we're going to do sunflowers on friday thank you so much and hope uh, hopefully you'll join uh, ruthlesspainters.com slash webinar we'll see you manana bye